Hello, I'm Atubo Jones and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Now listen, today is 30th, so tomorrow, 1st of July, we are having our 24 hours fast. Now if you haven't sent a message to us to join, because we need to send, it's a Zoom link, because it's a, it's, a, it's a community of pray, praying people. Do you understand? So, so we need to meet. It's not. I don't just want to be praying, and and you're there. I don't see you. No, we want to. We want to hear ourselves. We want to see ourselves praying. Praise God. And and it's such a blessing. I have gotten testimonies of people who say, "Look, I never thought I could fast for 24 hours, but time just went." And I realized, come. I mean, praise God. I've we've had testimony of people who who couldn't even fast because of health reasons, but decided I'm going to do this, and they got healed. Praise God. Listen. I want June to be a great month of blessing for you. So why don't you make the first day of the month holy by giving it holy to the Lord. Praise God. And see what he's going to do to you in your life throughout the month. So, so listen, get ready because tonight, tonight we're starting. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I'm so excited already concerning it. All right. Let's go into our first Corinthians. We're in chapter 2. <laughs> Yesterday we just we just did one verse. Praise <laughs> God. Well, let, let, let's see how the Lord will help us today. So we're in verse 8. It said, Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known that firing you is going to, to launch you into your big plan, they would not have done it. Had they known that attacking you attacking your education, attacking your business, attacking your life was what's going to make you discover God's purpose for your life. They would not have tried it. You see, so, so, so Satan always makes a mistake. I can simply tell you this. Wherever you see Satan striking, he's just making the biggest mistake. Because, you see, it is his striking. Oh, you know, the Lord told me this several years ago. It so blessed me. He said, listen, you know, I, when you find people praying against their enemies, praying against uh, 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 the devil, every hole the devil have in my life, release it. Listen, in God's plan, oh, this blessed me so much. I wish you, you would catch, catch it the way I caught it today, Lord. In God's purpose for your life, Satan has a role to play. And God's desire is that you let Satan play his role freely. <laughs> You're like, what? Satan? Oh, yeah. Think about it. Look through scriptures. Wherever Satan attacked was, was what brought God's blessing out of it. See, he, he thought he is attacking the children of Israel. Oh, before Satan ever came into your life, God had finished his works in your life. Hmm. A perfect example I always give where you know where this is concerned. You remember the story of Esther, right? Esther, Mordecai, Haman, and King Ahasuerus. Now we 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 see Haman having a 12 months plan to eliminate the Jews, right? He was carrying out his plan. And then at some point he became vexed with Mordecai. And he decided to build a gallow to kill Mordecai. He was going to hang him there. <laughs> now, it's so funny that while all this plan was going on in his heart and putting things in place to carry it out, God removed the queen, Queen Vanshti, and then brought in Esther, Mordecai's niece. And then, the day, ah, ya boske, bradia, hmm, it's important to pray and to pray the wisdom of God. The day Haman was going to ask the king for the head of Mordecai, you see, because you know this, go read the book of Esther. That very night, the king had a dream. And in that dream, and, and look at how events played out. Mordecai had saved the king's life in the past. And nothing was done to, to honor him. Nothing was done. No gift was given to him. Thank you wasn't even sent to him. And I imagine how it felt over back then. 
Can you imagine? The king even said thank you. He didn't even acknowledge nothing. Well, I'll just see in life, keep the best of attitude all the time. You don't know when your blessing is going to come. See? So he he did he didn't receive any commendation from the king. But then it so happened that the day Haman was going to ask the king for his head was the same day that Mordecai, uh, the king had a dream. And decided, look, he just woke up and said, look, someone saved my life. Get me the book of remembrance. There's something I'm looking for. Something is bothering me in my heart. And then they brought the book and they started reading, reading. And then they got to this place that, oh, Mordecai brought the news that saved the king's life. And then he said, oh, Mordecai, who's Mordecai? He's that guy to get... So, so what, what did we do for him? Nothing, sir. You mean someone saved my life and we didn't do anything to him? He said, nothing, sir. Ah, no, 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 no. That's wrong. How could I have missed that? And guess what? Haman was in the king's court waiting for access to get to the king to ask for Mordecai's head. And the king asked the servant, who's in the courtyard? And he said, oh, hey man, he's, oh, good, good, good. Call him for me. Hey man, oh, now I've gotten my time with the king. Praise God. And the king said, hey man, I'm thinking of honoring someone so special. You know, I'm just thinking, I, I, I've been thinking, I just don't know what to do. What do you think we should do to the guy that I want to honor? And hey man thought to himself, I have not seen anybody close to the king in these few years. I've not seen any new person spring up. Nobody has done something special in this palace that I'm the only one that the king, anytime I tell the king wisdom, the king he just, you know, you know, you know, just like the don't leave me challenge. You know, the king will, yeah, don't leave me, don't leave me, praise God. <laughs> you know, so, all right. So, Haman thought he was the one. And he said, king, I think I have a suggestion. He said, go ahead. He said, okay. You do this and do this, get the, the, the king's best chariot, get, get, his ro get a royal um, apparel to be put on him, and all that and all that. And when he finished, the king said, fine. Hey, man, I hope you took the note of everything you have said. Oh, king is all written in my notes. Fine. Now, I want you to go out there and do everything you have said to Mordecai. <laughs> Who? Mordecai, the same person I'm coming to ask for his head right now. I can just imagine the king said, and the king said, don't let anyone fail. And I can just imagine the king said, hey, hey man, I heard you wanted to see me. What the, uh, uh, nothing, sir. <laughs> I, I, we'll talk about it another time. Oh, Charlie Koba. That's how God deals with your enemies. Praise God. See, now, that was in the end. He had to go do all that king said to Mordecai. And he was the one in front of the horse, <laughs> declaring, oh, this is what the king has decided to do to the one who he has decided to honor. And guess what? Then Esther brought up the news about Haman's plot to the king. And the king said, what, Haman, you? And the king got so angry and stepped out. I just want you to follow the event. I love, you know, each time I think about it, I just say, Lord, I, when I see the scripture, I just, I, I just say, Lord, how, why won't men fear you? <laughs> and then the king just stepped out. And he was so furious. He, he decided to step out. And when he stepped out, him, I went on his knees to beg the king. He just, he just knelt before the queen and said, please, save my life. And that very moment, the king opened the door and entered. I said, what? You're trying to harass me? Who gave him the thought that Neymar was trying to harass his wife? And the king just read that meaning to it. And that stuck. He said, you mean? Ah. No. He, the, the king didn't listen to him. And guess what? There was a servant there that day. And the servant just spoke up. And what did the servant say? Sir. Hey man actually prepared a gallow where he wants to hang Mordecai. What? <laughs> what are you saying? He said, okay, this is what you're going to do. Go hang him on that same gallow that he had made. So now I ask the question. When Haman was building that gallow, what was on God's mind? Don't you think from the whole beginning of the story, Haman was the target? Don't you think so? 
<laughs> you know, don't you think God had thought of, okay, how, how, you know, God holds meetings with angels and he does some plotting with the angels. You say, how? Oh, yes. Think about it. Do you remember? Do you remember when God wanted, to, when God wanted King Ahab to die? He had a meeting with the angels. He said, who will deceive Ahab to go to war so that he will go and die? So God must have, oh, how, how do I get this him and guy out of the way? And a beautiful, and guess, guess the person that always brings that wonderful suggestions? The devil <laughs> is God. So it was the devil that plotted how Haman was going to die. And he delivered it. He put the thoughts in. Ah, mm. Fear God, my friends. Fear him. Now to you, I say love God. Love the Lord. Why? He's got your best interest at heart. There is no, didn't he say, if your ways please the Lord? He will cause even your enemies to be at peace. Do you know what that means? Do you know what God, what God means when he says he will cause your enemies to be at peace with you? He, he used the word he will cause, meaning he will make it happen. See? He will make it. He, he didn't say he will make your enemies come and apologize to you. No, say he will cause them. Meaning in that way that they are going against you, they will work out a blessing for you. And at the end of the day, you know, they, they, they want to take the credit. You know, it's me that brought that blessing. They wanted to destroy you, actually. You know? But by the time God works out a blessing for you through it, and then he says, you know, actually, you know, I had your good intro. Yeah, okay, thank you. You know, thank you. That's why you shouldn't hate anybody. Because you don't know where your blessing is going to come from. Even from the one who's trying to point a gun at you. Oh, I'm telling you. You don't know the ways of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go. Oh, look at verse 9. But as it is written, hallelujah, eyes had not seen, nor ears heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Are you this man? Think about it. Who, which man? For them that love him. You know, I wonder at people who don't study the scriptures. How would you miss something like this? Okay, so I think about myself. I love God. Do I love God? I love him. Jesus said, if you love, so how do I know I love God? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my word. Oh, so, so I see how I keep the words of Jesus. I see how I, I keep his word of love. I see how I keep, I, I keep his, I've kept it so much I don't struggle concerning it. It's, it's my natural habitat. Praise God. My natural habitat in life is keeping God's word. That, that's where I dwell. Praise God. So, I look at this and I say, I love God. And so what did he say? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of any man. It means the blessing I'm going to function in. There is nothing on earth that I can compare it. I'm going to be the first in it. Ah. <laughs> Did you get that? You are about to be the first in God's blessing in a new way. Just receive that and bless the name of the Lord because my time is up for today. <laughs> Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Listen, it's your season. All these words are coming to you because God has something special for you. Let's meet tonight and tomorrow we're fasting. Praise God. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>